In this clip, we're going to begin looking at working with the actual dynamics on our hair, and we're going to start by taking a look at the nucleus node. Now, as I go through the different options uh, over the next few clips related to dynamics, uh, I want to keep things moving quick, so I don't want to actually preview all the hair here. So what I'm going to do is select my hair system, let me close off anything we don't need here, and we're going to turn our display quality to zero. That way we're just going to see curves. However, I do want to see some volume. So one thing you can do that won't slow this down at all is go to your collisions over here and either show the collision thickness or the self-collision thickness. I'll show the self-collision thickness. That way we at least see some volume, but it's not really going to slow down the simulation. You can see right there it still moves fairly quickly. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump right into looking at our nucleus. Now it's important to note that the nucleus is kind of a big overarching you know, solver. It doesn't really specifically relate to hair. In fact, you won't see any options here at all relating specifically to hair. That's because the nucleus, if we switch here to our effects tab, actually works with anything with the little letter N in front of it, including particles and cloth. It's a big solver that kind of just solves all those physics in general. So you're going to see, again, very basic attributes here. Let me go ahead and close off the transform. That's just kind of for the position of the nucleus right there. So we have gravity, air density, wind. Again, nothing that relates specifically to hair, but it will, of course, affect our hair. If I go ahead and take my gravity up, you can see the hair will fall faster. Let's go ahead and put it back to its old setting. This is actually the accurate setting, 9.8 meters per second squared, if we were built to a specific meter setup, which right now we're not. We could also change the direction of gravity. Right now it's heading down, negative one, that's what we want. We can also change the air density, which is how thick the air is. If the air was extremely thick, it would of course be harder for the hair to move through it. You can imagine putting this very high it would be the equivalent of something like water. So I'll put it at 20 there, and you could see the hair is definitely moving much, much slower now, and we of course can you know, crank that up even further, and it's going to fall even slower. Now of course, if we were dealing with an underwater scene, we'd probably also want to take our gravity down though. But for now we'll leave it at 1, which is the default. We also have wind. You can see by default the wind direction is going to be in the positive x, so it's x, y, and z vector whenever you see these three boxes in a row. And you can see the hair starts getting blown off to the right over there, or at least our screen right. And you can also add some wind noise to it for a little more variation. All right, we'll go ahead and though just keep these off for right now. We don't really need any of those. We also have a ground plane right here. This would set up, you can see a little box kind of appears there, a ground plane. So if the hair was actually colliding with the ground, or rather, excuse me, colliding near the grid over here, it would actually appear to collide with the ground. We obviously don't have that issue right now. You know, the hair is pretty high up, but uh, that's there if you need it. This is a little bit more important when we are using hair for maybe other reasons. Maybe we're using it like the bristles on a mop or something. All right, we'll keep that off for now. Then we have our quality settings, substeps and max collision iterations. Basically, the higher these go, the more quality you're going to get with slower simulation times. At the moment, we're doing fine, so there's no reason to raise those two. Then we come to time attributes. All you really need to do in here generally is change the start frame if you need it. Right now we're on frame one anyway, so that's fine. But if you need it to start, let's say, in negative frames or just later in the simulation, you can adjust that here. Then it brings us to the scale attributes, and these are actually very important. We have time scale and space scale. This is going to change the speed of our simulation. Time scale, if I were to, let's say, put this at point one and hit play, you could see it's moving so incredibly slow you can barely notice it. Or I can put this at three and it's going to run three times faster. Now it's important to note that it's not changing the physics here at all. It's still running at the exact same simulation. It's just basically speeding it up or slowing it down, almost like using a DVR. Space scale, on the other hand, is going to change the relationship of the hair to the grid. Right now, it sees every one of these grid units as a meter, which means that these hairs are roughly five meters long each, which means they're actually falling quite a ways. That's why it takes them so long to fall. We know that normally hair would fall much, much faster. That's already 32 frames. That's roughly a second and a half. So by dropping our space scale, let's say to 0.2, 
we can change the relationship. So now these meters aren't going to be meters. They're going to be roughly uh, five times smaller. And you can see the hair immediately falls faster. It's completely flat against the head before even a second is up. That's going to be better for what we're doing. I'm going to keep this at about 0.15. And there we go. So that's all there really is to the nucleus. Now, we didn't go over every option in detail. It's not really necessary for hair. However, if you are interested in knowing a lot more about the nucleus, take a look at our recent End Particle Fundamentals course on Pluralsight. I'm the author of that course as well. And we do have a clip in there that goes over every one of these settings in a lot more detail. Again, not always necessary for hair, but if you are curious about the nucleus overall, you can see more of those settings there. So just to kind of finish off this clip, uh, I don't like that the hair is actually starting up here. I actually want it to start already relaxed. So to do that, all I have to do is play this through until I get to a point where, you know, I generally like the position of the hair. Let's say right about, uh, right about there. That seems like it's you know, more or less relaxed. All I need to do is select my output curves here. I'm going to come up here to N hair. And I'm going to set a start position. And we have two choices, from the current frame, which is obviously what we want, or from a rest position. We'll discuss rest position and rest curves a little bit later. I'll go ahead and choose from current. We're going to give it just a second to calculate through. It's got to set the position for every one of those hairs. And now when I rewind my scene, you can see we start from this position. I'll hit play, and you can see it just kind of re-relaxes itself right there. But it now does start from there. All right, so that's all for this clip. In the next clip, we're going to begin looking at our hair system, which is going to have a lot of the dynamic properties that are much more specific to hair itself, as opposed to the nucleus, which is much more generic. I'll see you all there.